I was going to ask you um, about the Jack Lewis article and how that came about and what you felt about the result of it. Well, that came about because um, he interviewed me because slight, just previous to that there'd been an, uh, some incident at the speakeasy where somebody had got injured and one of them, John Rotney and I, were suspected. Of course, we had nothing to do with it whatsoever. And, um, he was trying to... He, he picked me out to interview because my name was Vicious. And uh, it was obvious that he was trying to find out from the questions he asked. Like, um, he asked me if I was violent and things like that. And um, if I did this and that. All very subtle, de designed to, uh, to a person of low intelligence, obviously, such as myself. I would be totally fooled by this. And he would get it all out of me, and I would say, yes, I'm big, tough, and vicious, and I beat up all these people and split people's heads open. And this was what he came along to do, and he was so sure that he was going to get that. So, um, I told him exactly the opposite of what he wanted to hear. I thought, what a nice intellectual boy I was, and I wouldn't dream of doing anything like that. And, I had pet hamsters and things like that, you know what I mean? <laughs> Made my, myself seem like butter wouldn't melt in my mouth and the fucking jerk off fell for it as well. He's, they're just so thick, those arseholes. They wouldn't, they wouldn't know a string quartet from a string vest. They're just totally dumb. They don't know a fucking thing. They make me sick. They make me physically ill because they're not in touch with what's going on at all. They, they've got no idea of what is happening. They, they can't, you know, they can't handle it. That's why, you know, I mean, people would have read, people read in, in that thing about how I, I love my mummy and she's pleased that I've at last found something that's near to my heart. You know what I mean? And, like, as far as I'm concerned, anybody with any sus looks at the, at the picture of me standing there and looks at what I've said and says the two don't go together. Of course. He lacked the intelligence, like most grown-ups, to do anything of the sort. Grown-ups have just got no intelligence at all. As soon as somebody stops being a kid, they stop being aware. And it doesn't matter how old you are, you can be 99 and still be a kid. And as long as you're a kid, you're aware and you know what's happening. But as soon as you grow up, you... Uh, have you noticed the way... Grow, the, I didn't, the definition of a grown-up is somebody who catches on to things when kids discard them, do you know what I mean? Like you always, you see grown-ups, when flared trousers for instance, or something like that were in in the 60s or whenever it was, I don't know, uh, grown-ups said that, and long hair, grown-ups said they were awful and shocking and you should have short hair and wear straight trousers. And now, the grown-ups have grown into, now have long hair and think long hair is fine and, and wear flared trousers. We gave all that up because as soon as grown-ups follow kids, whatever kids do, grown-ups follow like ten years later when it's become defunct, when it's become a figure of fun for the kids, it's then acceptable to grown-ups. That's why they can never ever win because being that much older, they're that much further away from everything. They lose touch, which is why I shall die when I'm around about 24. I expect, if not sooner, and why my friend will die soon. Who's your friend? Who's here? You mean? Yeah, mm. that girl. Just try making us grow up. <laughs> not a chance. You said what you think about Jack Lewis, who's a Fleet Street journalist. What do you think about? the journalists who have taken a more kind of serious approach to you and even the kind of sociological jargon that has oh, got geez. used about you. Uh, uh, can you give me an example of that? Um, well, I think the most famous example is, is Dole Q Rock. Oh my God, Dole Q Rock. Well, I mean, like, I'm not on the Dole. I, was, I, wasn't even, I was never even on the Dole before I joined the band. I could never... I think I went down there one week and from then on I couldn't be bothered to go down and collect a I, I could pond more than like 10 pounds in a week, do you know what I mean? Like I never, 
I had no source of income whatsoever, but I never starved. Any growing up would have done, that's for sure. One thing that the, a lot of these people have, have concentrated on is, is the fact that, oh, kids, they leave school, they have to go on the dole. But they never seem to talk really about work and the fact that it can be as, as bad actually going to work and having a job as being on the dole. Do you agree with that? Yeah, really, yeah. It's a grown up attitude that you must, you must do this and you must do that. Like, my attitude to anything is that you don't have to do anything. Nobody has to do anything. Or should have to, anyway. What do you feel about work? Have you ever had... You know, I've worked job? briefly, I think it's absolutely awful. What did you do? You know, I worked in a sawmill or something. It was good fun, actually. I worked with my mate. Hey, that t-shirt looks good. Does it? Even if it is dry. Oh, my God. That's my favourite t-shirt. It's brilliant. It's got a bona fide blood stain on it as well. From when I got my eyes split open. Is that from that? Yeah. I think it was from that. Was it? Oh, maybe it was. Or maybe both. Yeah. Yeah, you said you, you worked in a in a sawmill. Yeah. Or, yeah. What about it? I was asking you what you you thought about work in general. Shit. It's shit. Why? Because it's not what you want to do. If it's not what you want to do, it's shit. Do you know what I mean? I wanted to ask you what you felt about the um, Russ Mayer film. The Russ Mayer film? I don't really know anything about it. All I can say about it is it has a very weak script, as far as I can see. It doesn't seem to be very interesting at all. In what way is, is the script weird? It's weak. Oh, weak. Weak, yeah. yeah. In every way. There's no story to it at all, whatsoever. It seems to me that, in a way, it's trying to embalm the pistols. Embalming, how do you yeah. mean? Yeah, well, instead of trying to, to push them further, it seems that it's it's trying to really almost bury them as though, you know, they're what I, past and, what, and done. Really? Oh, I, don't, I didn't get that impression at all. What I, what I feel is that it's a cheap attempt to make money, do you know what I mean? And I don't like it for that reason, because, like, I mean, I suppose we'll make money off our album and our singles and stuff, but, like, those that they were made as we wanted them exactly with what we had to say and done exactly how we wanted them right and like we didn't put them out to make money we put them out because we wanted to do them do you know what i mean and like you know if, if we make money for them who, who gives a fuck who if we don't who gives a fuck i couldn't care less i don't give two shits but the film the thing that i'm ha unhappy about with the film is that russ mayer said to me that it would be um that he wanted to make a film that would be good for the box office and people would be interested in and want to come to see and would make a lot of money. And like I said to him, well, like, what about making something that you're genuinely interested in that really, like, means something to you? And, like, he seemed a little puzzled by that. He, like, he might as well have said, what do you mean what you're interested in? It's what the public's interested in. And, like, as far as I'm concerned, that's a load of fucking shit. Because I've got absolutely no... Burn yourself. Well, um... um like, I, I've got absolutely no interest in pleasing the general public at all. I don't want to. Because I think that largely they're scum. They make me, they make me physically sick, the general public. They are scum. 
and I hope you print that because that's my that is my opinion of like 99% of the shit you find out in the street you don't know a fucking thing and like, I don't want to please cunts like them yeah, but is it actually the people or well, like, I want to I, yes it is it's the people and their fucking god awful attitudes what I want to do is put something else out that I like and uh, like whoever else likes it will find it, do you know what I mean? And if like nobody else in the whole fucking world likes it, I could give two shits. It doesn't sell one copy, it gives a fuck. The point is that it's what you want to do. You have fun making it and you have fun listening to it. I listen to our records a lot because I like them. I think they're good records, otherwise I wouldn't have had any part in them. I like our music to listen to as much as I like the Ramones to listen to. The Ramones are one of my fav- and my favourite group, by the way. But like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. We do what we do for ourselves, not for some fucking creep out there. That's not what it's for. It's specifically not for those arseholes. It's for anyone who like who appreciates it without compromise. <laughs> What sort of films do you yourself like? I don't like any kind of films. I hate films. What is it about them that you hate? Because people have to act parts in them, play people who they're not, you know what I mean? And it's pretense, it's lies, it's just shit. It builds things up to be not what they are. Like If, if you filmed a, a day in the life of me, it's like a day in the life of a pop star, right? And you have them going around in a flash car and whacking up smack and doing this and that and the other and like a day in my life is like getting up at three o'clock going to the office and hustling ten quid out of Sophie or something and going and fucking going somewhere and waiting hours to fucking cop some dope you know what I mean and like that is the most boring thing on earth it's as boring as sitting at home and drinking beer or fucking any other shit thing to do you know what I mean and like films are about lies, or they're about making things look glamorous, and nothing's glamorous. Everything's a load of bullshit. And it makes me sick to think that people will act out parts and, you know, like, make it all seem large and large, just so that some crud out there can get off on some fantasy. That life is wonderful, really, and one day... You know, when I was, like, um, ten years old, and when I used, to, I used to think Mark Bowden was great, I used to think to myself, what a wonderful life Mark Bowden was to have. Just, yeah. just think, and when I, if only I could be like him, gosh, just think of the things he must do. And like I do the things that he's done before, he's, that stupid bitch, bitch crashed his fucking mini for him or something. And like, he probably does, did exactly the same thing as what I do now, sit in my mummy's front room because I don't have anywhere to live. You know what I mean? Full, fucking full of shit and I hate it all but there's nothing else to do it's better than doing nothing at all and it's certainly better than doing something I don't want to do what do you uh, feel about television? I hate it in mean, a passion and everything to do with it it's the worst it's depressing television it frightens me it's Huey Green things like that Huey Green is the most disgusting person I've ever seen in my life. He makes me ill. He makes me want to vomit. He's so smarmy. The way they fucking kiss ass, you know what I mean? The way they, like, he says, and now the wonderful this, that, and the other. And he doesn't mean, a, he, in all the time he's been on that programme, he hasn't meant one fucking word that he's ever said. You know what I mean? So why do it? Do you know what I mean? If somebody asked me to get up there and say that these acts were wonderful and stuff like that for a thousand pounds a week, I'd tell them to go and fucking eat shit. Either that or I'd do it, but people would know what I meant. You'd probably get the second two seconds of flash. But I hate insincerity. You do something, you just don't do it because you like it and you want to do it. Not because... Because anything you gain is just a load of hog wash anyway. Like what you do is money, for instance. I can think of one thing to do with money. <laughs> one thing is what I do with all my money, every hate of it.
You were at Technical College with John, weren't you? Did you get on alright there or not? What do you mean, work-wise? Anyways. Well, work-wise, how I got on there. I got on there really well with John. I got on there really well with the black kids. They were fucking great in space in that college. They were really cool, you know what I mean? And they used to have these reggae discos with massive sound systems. And they were really loose, but like... Everything else was shit. I hated work. I never did anything at all. I didn't do a single thing. I used to be always making excuses. And I couldn't do any of the work anyway, not because I was unintelligent or anything, but simply because I wasn't interested in it. And you can't do anything if you're not interested in it. I'm, I'm incapable of doing something I don't want to do. I'm not, I just can't do it. I can't force myself to do things. I either want to do it or I don't. Before you went there, did you anticipate that it would be good? No, I knew it would be shit. Mm. I couldn't think of anything else to do, and I was kind of not of an age where I could just hustle, do you know what I mean? How old were you then when you left school? Fifteen. And what school were you at? Chris Old Park. That's comprehensive, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Do you read a lot? No, I never read. I read comics mostly. Mm. I hate books. I find them tedious. I only like very entertaining books. I like horror books. What sort of horror? Like Edgar Allan Poe kind of thing? No, that's too corny. I like pen horror books. with short stories in them. Don't you think that books have got anything to offer that other things haven't? No. I think nothing has anything to offer, especially television and books. There's a much bigger range of books, though, than there is of television programmes. Well, I find that if I want to know something, I know about it anyway. I find out about it. And the things that I don't want to know about, just, you know... I can't say I, I like books, but... If it's necessary for me to read a book to find out something I want to find out, I will read the book, happily. But, as such, I, don't, I can't generalise like that. I can't generalise over anything. I don't like anything particularly. So you find them useful, up to a point? I can, yeah, I guess so. No, not even that. No, I don't find them useful. It's kind of... It's not really like that. Just, just, I will just use them if, you know, if that I can gain anything from them. What sort of things? I can't, I don't really know. I can't think of anything. I mean, do you use, use them to solve practical problems, like sort of how to put on a guitar string? Or, no, or do you no, use I them to find do. out? Most of the things that I know, I, I just learn. I never, I never, I feel things. I don't. How can I put it? I don't think about things very much. I feel things while I'm in things, but I just do things. One thing I wanted to ask you, because you came into the band quite late on, um, is whether you think your being there is going to change the way that it goes what, in quite the band? a bit. Yeah. Yes, it changed it enormously. Mm. In what way? Um, for start, the lineup is much more handsome now. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fact. Um, <laughs> and uh, we play the songs much faster now. And um, also, I write differently from the way Glenn used to. I haven't written very much lately, but I mean, since I've been in the group, but I'm starting to now more. And um, just the fact that I'm there instead of Glenn means that the others do everything differently, I think. Because they have to adapt it to, like, fit in with me, do you know what I mean? Mm. So, yeah, I think it... When anyone... Whenever there's a change in something, it... A change is a change, right? So if something changes, it is different. It has to be, obviously. It can't be the same, or otherwise... And the next question. 
I get the feeling that you that's exactly what John said to me <laughs> on one occasion. I get the feeling that you've got um more independent of Malcolm as well, is that right? Independent of what me yeah. personally? No, the band as a whole. Um the band's no independent on Malcolm, that's fucking a toss bag. <laughs> I hate that geezer. I'm not dependent on him at all. I'd smash his face in quite happily. I depend on him for exactly nothing. Do you know, all I've ever got out of him is, a, I think it's 15 pounds in all the time that I've known the fucking bastard. And a t-shirt, he gave me a free t-shirt once, years ago. And once he gave me a fiver and I stole a tenner off him a little while ago. And that's all. Loads and creatures. Um, why? Do you think he's mean? Well, I know he's mean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anything. Yeah. Yeah. So your feeling like that towards him must alter how the band as a whole. Why? Do they feel differently? I think that, uh, yes, I think they do feel differently from you, all of them. Why? Do they like him? Like is a funny word. I, I think he's regarded as, as slightly separate, although both Paul and John said to me that they regarded him as the fifth member of the band. Yeah, I'm fine. Well, I certainly that. don't. Fifth member, though, that's scum. He never even turns up to gigs. Do you feel he ought to? I mean, do you feel Yes, I fucking well do. I feel he ought to turn up to every gig we do if he's got any bloody interest in us. If he's a fifth member of the band, he should be at every fucking gig. Boogie is the fifth member of the band. Yeah. If anyone, Boogie, yeah. the fucking sound geezer. Boogie's a laugh. But Malcolm, no way. Boogie's the fifth member of the group. I wouldn't even call him that, but if anybody is, it's him. So why do you put up with him as a manager? Because he's that. He's okay. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I don't just. I don't. How can I put it? I, I hate his guts, you know what I mean? But I like him just enough so that he's enough like us to be able to be our manager. I can't think of anybody else that I could tolerate. Wouldn't have anybody else as our manager. Mm. 